I live in the countryside and I see how much of the land, its potential, is just not being used. I mean, in Hampshire, a lot of the land is devoted to stables and horses. So we could actually um, change the land use to, to benefit the wildlife, the planet, the animals and us. A lot of people ask me, would the landscape look monotonous without livestock? I mean, I could say that we've actually created an artificial landscape which was more diverse before with trees and wildlife, and we would actually encourage the diversity of crops. We would be seeing orchards of nuts and fruit. We would encourage a lot of understory uh, shrub layers of soft fruit, a great diversity of vegetables and cereal crops. It would actually be a much better mixture of, of crops instead of huge monocultures of acres and acres. Because of the diversity, you would get more habitat for the wildlife. It would actually encourage the wildlife, which is under a great, great pressure with the current conventional farming. The bees here are, are very important. They actually uh, operate at much lower temperatures than honeybees. They come out earlier and they, and they feed later, so you're getting good pollination. I know also here there are three species of parasitic wasp, which means that you have a reduction in caterpillar numbers, which cause a great deal of damage to cabbages and broccoli and kale, and hardly any, any damage is seen here. Uh, the hedgerows are kept very, very um, thick. They're not cut every year, so they're richer for wildlife, and they're also connecting um, annuals between the hedgerows across the fields, which act as um, beetle banks and, and wildlife corridors. What these methods do is they actually benefit the biodiversity. You have more predators which keep a balance. You don't have the pest and disease problems. Could we manage on a plant-based diet in the UK? A lot of work being done with agroforestry uh, is showing that uh, we could have a lot of the crops growing here that we're actually importing at the moment. And a lot of things could still be grown outside. We wouldn't have to have heated greenhouses. And even just with the polytunnel, like we're seeing here, it's surprising what you can achieve. We have now several stock-free, commercial stock-free farms like this one. Um, we know that these, these methods work. Stock-free organic farming is a system of food production which excludes any animal byproducts or any dependence on animal inputs at all. It's not just about growing crops, it's also about the way we interact with what goes on you know, within nature around us. We've been doing it now for 15 or 16 years. Um, it's working very well, people are very happy with it. I mean, it's nice to have people back on the land, working the land, and everybody's more than happy to be doing it. We've developed a system of fertility building, uh, which relies very much on green manure, so we're using plants to produce nutrients which are fixed from the air to improve biodiversity, uh, and not relying on importing somebody else's land to support our fertility, which is what most conventional and organic production is dependent on. So we, we've kind of designed this system which is more or less independent of exterior forces. And because we're building carbon in the soil, this is particularly important, um, and a very small increase in organic content in the soil uh, has a huge effect in terms of carbon entrapment. In fact, this is one of the biggest carbon sinks possible, soil. So it's not only good for animals, it's also very good for carbon capture, which is obviously good for climate change. So we're building organic material, and the only way to build organic material long term is through plants. You cannot do it through manure, because manure dissipates into the environment very quickly, it gets broken down. Whereas plants, they leave roots in the ground, which gradually decay and become carbon. In here, there's actually four different types of green manure, yeah. four yeah. different plants, all doing slightly different things. Uh, but all building fertility. And the, the, the final outcome of this is a, a soil which is very friable, good, uh, good population of worms, yeah. easily worked, doesn't take as much energy to work soil yes. when it's in good yes. condition, yes. and uh, very good for plant roots. So yeah. this, this forms the basis of fertility for future cropping. For future cropping, yeah. yeah. You grow a whole range of crops, 70 different types of vegetables almost 300 sowings a year, almost one sowing every day on average. So it's making the best possible use of land to feed people, which is really what farming should be doing. Um, and I, I do very much hope that there will be a move, a transition from the conventional type of agriculture we have now to uh, a stock-free agriculture in the future. Right, okay. Welcome, see you later. 
stock-free farming uh, could support people in developing countries as well as here, um, the same techniques would be beneficial. We would actually not use the vast amounts of water, land, food to support the livestock. We would actually create more tree habitats, making a difference with climate change. Thank you.